Okay, there's a lot of settings here, so if you need to get to a particular one, go to the table of contents down below in the description. To program our settings, we use these four buttons across the bottom row. Um, you press and hold the enter button, and you enter program mode. Uh, notice program number one is blinking. You can use your up and down buttons to go through the different program numbers. Program three, program four, and so forth. We'll go back. When you're on the program that you want to edit, hit the enter button again. Now notice that the parameter is blinking. And then you can change the parameters by using your up and down buttons. When you get to the parameter that you want to save, just press the enter button again. Notice that the program number is blinking, but the parameter has gone solid, and that means you've saved it. When you're finished, you just hit the escape button to go back to the main window. And we're going to start with setting number one, which chooses the priority of the source of power. And you see you have three parameters to choose from, SBU, solar, or utility. And SBU stands for solar battery utility in that order. Ordinarily, you'll run on solar and battery, but you'll switch to the grid if the battery voltage drops below the setting that you'll enter at setting number 12. So let's go up to setting number 12. And it's currently set for 44, and right now our battery level is about 47.7. So we're going to change this and force it to switch over to utility. And you just do this by moving the up and down and hit enter every time you've got the number that you want. And we'll set it to 47.7. Hit enter again. And it takes it. And there we're going to go back, escape to the main display. And you can see our current battery voltage is about 47.7. Okay, and here we are. Uh, notice that the light is blinking right now. There we go. Now the voltage is starting to drop, and they're just switched over. And the green light in the upper left that was blinking a second ago has now gone solid, telling us we're on grid power. And from the utility pole icon, you see a line that's connected to the load, showing us that we're now running our loads off of the utility power. Okay, so that was SBU mode. Let's look at SOL or solar mode. So again, we just use our up and down buttons to switch to solar mode. And solar mode is very similar to SBU. They both run on solar and battery. They're both going to switch to the grid. The difference is solar mode will switch to the grid whenever your panels are not making any power. So basically, SBU mode can still run after sunset off of your battery. Uh, solar mode will not run off of your battery alone. It has to have the solar panels working also. Also, I just want to point out that the whole reason for setting number 12 is to protect your batteries from getting too low. Uh, now let's take a quick look at the utility mode. And our third choice is utility mode. And this works in two different ways. Off the grid with a generator, and the generator does not have auto start. Or if you're on grid, you can also use it as a UPS. Okay, so let's look at this from the point of view of running a generator off grid. Um, whenever the generator is running, it's going to take precedence. You turn off your generator and you'll switch to solar and battery. Of course, you're trying to run on solar as much as possible, but if you have a couple of cloudy days or just bad weather, um, whenever you fire up your generator, it takes over and runs your loads. You turn off your generator and you're right back over running off of solar and battery. But keep in mind, even when you're running on the generator, you can still use whatever solar you have to charge your batteries, or you can charge off the generator, or you can charge off solar and generator. So these three modes we've been looking at in setting number one only have to do with how you power your loads. The charging settings are completely separate. We'll look at those in a minute. So here you're running on the generator, and when you turn your generator off, it will switch back over to your solar. And there you can see it switched back to your battery and solar again. And now we're going to go to setting number two, which is the total charging power. The GrowWatt has two chargers, a grid charger and a solar charger. And this is the maximum number of amps that both of those chargers can produce added together. Since I don't really use my charger 
in the grow watt, it is set for the minimum, but it goes up to 120 amps. And setting number three is the acceptable range of voltages from the grid or utility input. Um, first, you have this appliance mode, which is uh, a range of 65 to 140 volts. And next is the generator mode, which is also 65 to 140 volts, but it's set up for running with your generator. And lastly, we have the UPS mode, which has a little tighter range. It goes from 95 volts to 140 volts, acceptable more for uh, electronics and personal computers. Okay, and setting number four, this is the power saver mode. Uh, the DS here stands for disabled, which is the default, and it doesn't do anything right now. If you enable it with the EN here, then the inverter will turn itself off whenever there's not a load on it. Well, since I've got loads that run basically 24-7 here, um, I always leave this disabled. Okay, next, the battery type. Um, I leave mine in user mode. Uh, I'm using it with some lithium-ion batteries, but you also have choices of a flooded lead-acid battery. Um, also a standard AGM battery. And this next one is LI, which is lithium, but it is only for the grow watt lithium batteries which are supposed to come out in the future and then their bms will talk to the grow watt inverter which would be cool um, but if you're using any other kind of lithium battery like i am you would do it on user mode and then you can set your own charging parameters on some other settings that we'll see in just a minute now there's a new version of the firmware since i shot this video you want to make sure you use that and use us2 and we go to setting number six um, I'm not even sure what the uh, symbols are, especially the one in the middle here. But anyway, if it ends in an E, it's enabled. And that means the uh, grow watt inverter will restart if it overloads. And when it ends in a D, it, the auto restart is disabled and the grow watt will shut itself down if it overloads. And setting number seven is very similar to that, except it's about temperature. Uh, it will auto restart if the temperature gets too high. And that's on E. And if it is on N Z and D, it's disabled. And the grow watt inverter will shut down on a high temperature. Next is setting number eight, which is the output voltage. And that is uh, normally at 120 volts. That's the default. Uh, but you could also set it for 110 volts or 100 volts. And setting number nine is the output frequency. And your choices are 60 hertz or 50 hertz. And setting number 10 is the number of batteries in series. And four 12 volt batteries in series is 48 volts. Uh, just leave this on the default uh, number four for a 48 volt system setting number 11 is the utility charging current okay if you're off grid running a generator you want to start low and slowly work up to higher amps if you have this too high it may cause your generator to run roughly um, it also could cause the generator frequency to drift off of 60 hertz and if you're using this on grid you also want to set this to a low charging current this keeps from cycling between the grid and the battery multiple times during the night. I'm going to go into more detail in this in two new videos, one specifically for on-grid and one for off-grid. The links will be in the description. Setting number 12, this is the battery voltage. Uh, when we drop to this level, uh, we will switch from battery back to the grid again. And this worked with our setting number one if we were in SBU mode. So the next setting, setting number 13, is when it recharges, the battery recharges to this level, we switch back and start using the battery again. And setting 14 is four different uh, charging modes. OSO is only solar charger, and like it sounds, only the solar charger works. The grid charger does not work in this mode. And next is SNU, which is solar and utility. Um, both chargers will work at the same time and this is charge utility this is the utility has the priority it will charge only off the utility until the utility is not available on a power outage or something and then it will charge off of solar 
and this is charge solar. This The solar has the priority. It will charge only off of solar power unless the solar is not available at nighttime and so forth. Um, and then it will charge off the utility. And setting number 15, this is the annoying beep. That's not what it's called in the manual, but it's what it is. Uh, this may be one of the first settings you want to get in and change. Uh, anyway, I keep it off, but uh, let's turn it on and let you hear what it sounds like. Everything you do from now on beeps until you can't stand it anymore. But anyway, go to setting 15, turn it off, hit enter, and it stops. Ah. And this 16 is the backlight for the display. Uh, most people will just let this run all the time, but if you want it to go off, you can turn the backlight off and it will go out about five minutes after the last time you press a button. Anytime you press a button again, it will light back up. And next is an alarm that goes off if the main power source is interrupted. And that could be the grid power or it could be the battery power, depending on what mode you're running in. And number 18 is an overload bypass. Um, again, if it ends in D, it's bypassed and it doesn't do anything. If it ends in E, it's engaged, and what happens here is on an overload, uh, it switches from battery to grid. And the next three settings only work if you used user mode in the batteries type in setting number five. But if you use user, you get bulk charge, float charge, and then 21 is a low battery cutoff, which will shut the inverter down if the battery gets below that setting. Make sure you set program 21 to be a volt or two higher than your BMS cutoff. Setting 22 is the solar balance. By default, this is enabled. And what that means is you can keep charging your battery at the maximum charge level that you set. Plus, you can power loads up to the maximum limit of the grow watt, which I believe is 120 amps, and obviously the maximum that you can get out of your solar panels. If this setting is disabled though, both your uh, charging and your loads are limited by your maximum current that you said earlier. Okay, so next, if you go up, um, you can't reach setting 23 and without turning off the inverter. We'll come back to that. So setting 24, Okay, this is a special use of the relay that's on the bottom of the grow watt, and it allows you, when it's enabled, to bond the ground and the neutral only while you're in battery mode. Again, most of you are not going to need this. I would suggest you just leave it disabled unless you need that use. And now we're on our final setting, which was setting 23, and you can only get to it if you turn off the inverter. So we're going to reach underneath of the inverter and turn it off with this switch. And as you can see, the lights went out. Okay, now we can switch to setting number 23. And over here in the parameters, you can see I'm running in SIG, which is single mode, meaning just one unit running by itself. And um, these that start with a two, these are all for split phase. And you put a different number on each one of the uh, units that you have. These ones that start with a three are for three phase hookup. And PAL is for parallel. You can hook multiple units together. They run in single phase still at 120, but you get more power. So not, for example, two units running in parallel would give you 6,000 watts. And in the manual, you can find uh, the details of how to set up all of these different modes. Okay, so let's uh, reach back under and turn this back on. Okay, and that does it for this long-winded video. As always, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next video. Hey, reach down and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of these. Thanks. Have a great day.